very much. And that's it from us on the BBC News at six. Time now for the news where you are. Goodbye. Hello, good evening. I'm Roger Johnson. Welcome to Northwest Tonight, live from Southport once again this evening and across the UK on BBC News, where within the past half hour, a vigil has been held for those involved in yesterday's horrific knife attack in this town. The three little girls who died have today been named as Alice da Silva Aguiar, who was nine, six-year-old BB King and Elsie Dot Stankham, who was seven. This is a community still in shock, reeling and crying, trying to come to terms with what happened here yesterday. The Prime Minister, Keir Starmer, visited Southport earlier to thank the first responders who were on the scene and witnessed the horrors of what occurred on Hart Street, and also to show solidarity with the families. I came here to pay my respects to the families and the victims who are going through raw pain and grief. Um, as a father myself, I can't even imagine what they're going through. Prayers also for others injured in the attack, thought to include yoga teacher Leanne Lucas, who was running the dance class. And amid the grief and the disbelief here, people have rallied round with help and support. It's indescribable, the impact. Southport is a really kind of close-knit community in so many ways. People know people, people have lived here all their lives. The impact is it's like the ripple effect. Just over 30 hours since the most appalling atrocity was committed in the town of Southport, a, a quiet, peaceful seaside town on the coast just north of Liverpool. A man with a knife attacking at a children's nursery where they, where they were having a, a Taylor Swift dance yoga and craft class at the start of their summer holidays. Within the past hour, a vigil has been held here. As you can see, it's starting to break up. More flowers are being laid in the centre of the uh, little rotunda in front of the Atkinson building here on Lord Street. In memory of three little girls who died in support of those who were injured, those three little girls today have been named the girls who died. Alista Silva Aguiar was nine years old. She died overnight at Alderhey Children's Hospital of the injuries that she sustained. Bibi King was six years old. And Elsie Stankham, who also died yesterday, was aged seven. Tonight, those eight injured people, the eight injured children, Two of them remain in a critical condition. Two adults, as we mentioned at the beginning of the programme, were also seriously injured and are continuing to receive treatment. And a 17-year-old who is suspected of having, having carried out the knife attack, who lived just a few miles away, uh, just outside Southport, is still being questioned this evening by police who are investigating the most appalling atrocity. One which has seen this town come together in the last half hour, as I said, thousands of people standing outside the Atkinson, listening to prayers, listening to some kind and consoling words from some of the clergy in this town who have uh, been gathering to share their thoughts, share their sorrow and share some of their feelings of shock and revulsion. At the scene today, more flowers have been laid. We'll see those in, in just a moment, but uh, this is a town which is struggling to come to terms, quite honestly, with what happened here. No one would have imagined it anywhere, but certainly not in Southport, a, a pleasant little town just north, as I said, of Liverpool. Andy Gill is at the scene. At... What happened in Southport has been described as an atrocity, and on the street where it happened today, the flowers, the children's soft toys, the grief... You just feel compelled that you must be here just to say, God bless you. So the kids upstairs who've lost their lives and to the people in hospital now who, God willing, they'll pull through. Among those bringing floral tributes today, local firefighters, some visibly upset by what the emergency services witnessed yesterday. Shops close to the scene were closed as a mark of respect.
it's just heartbreaking. It's it could be anyone there. People have taken, gone out, got ready in the morning, had their breakfast, gone out with their family to to go and enjoy a day, and this is this has happened. The three girls who died were aged nine, six, and seven. The parents of BB King, the youngest, said. No words can describe the devastation that has hit our family as we try to deal with the loss of our little girl. And Alice Aguirre's family said, keep smiling and dancing like you love to do, our princess. You were always our princess and no one would change that. This afternoon, the Prime Minister was in Southport to pay his respects. He said he was immensely proud of the emergency services actions. Earlier, the Home Secretary joined Merseyside's Chief Constable to lay flowers at the scene. There would be deep distress right across the country as well as here in Southport for uh, this appalling, just truly horrific attack because it, it's beyond every parent's worst nightmare. You had a, a what should have been a, a children's party having fun in the beginning of the summer holidays could then turn into something so devastating. The children who were attacked were at a Taylor Swift themed dance class. On Instagram today, she said the horror of what happened was washing over her continuously. She was completely in shock at the loss of life and innocence and was at a loss for how to ever convey her sympathy to the families. This afternoon, former Liverpool players Phil Thompson and Robbie Fowler and Ian Snodden and Graham Stewart of Everton were in Southport to pay their respects. We've got a, a huge uh, following of supporters up here in this neck of the woods. And it's so important for us to show our support to our, you know, community, because um, we're all feeling for them. You know, t yesterday was a horrific turn of events. You know, defenceless young kids losing their lives. The BBC understands that one of the adults who was attacked was yoga teacher Leanne Lucas. She's 35 years old. The 17-year-old boy arrested on suspicion of murder and attempted murder was born in Cardiff to Rwandan parents. They moved to Southport in 2013. Police say a name circulating widely on social media supposedly identifying him is not the correct name. Well, you saw there how Taylor Swift has reacted to what happened here and her fans have responded too. One of them setting up a fundraising page called Swifties for Southport. The money raised will go to the Alder Hay charity. Alder Hay, of course, the children's hospital in Liverpool where many of the victims were sent. The target for that fund was £13,000. I can tell you in the last couple of minutes it had raised £198,000. Roger. Incredible, Andy. Thank you very much indeed. Andy Giller, live at the scene of yesterday's stabbings. Uh, late this afternoon, we had tributes to the three girls who died from the head teachers of their schools, Churchtown Primary, where Alice da Silva Aguiar went, said that she was the happiest of souls, a true ray of sunshine, known and loved by everybody at the school. Uh, Bebby King was at the same school, uh, the head teacher there at Churchtown, saying, a joyful soul whose kindness radiated through the school her considerate nature and her love of learning shone through. And then uh, little Elise Stankham, who of course was still at infant school, she was only six years old. Uh, her head teacher called her a kind and caring friend, adored by all who met her. It's hard to put into words, they said, how amazing Elsie was. Let's talk to the Bishop of Liverpool, who has joined us here on, the, uh, on Lord Street in front of the, uh, the building here this evening in Southport. Uh, Dr. Reverend John Palumbalaf, thank you very much indeed for, for talking to us. I, I, I'm struggling for words, to be honest, 24 hours on after what happened. How do you process what we're dealing with here? Like you, I'm struggling also for words. Uh, it was a matter of absolute shock yesterday. And after things unfolded uh, and got more information, uh, the depth of that kind of tragedy and the grief and you know, uh, sadness of the community really sank in and it was terrible actually to be in the middle of the community uh, to join with them sharing their pain and sharing their uh, agony and grief. Um, and events like the one we've just seen it was brief it was only about 15 minutes yeah. but I, can't, I couldn't see to count how many people were here but yeah. there were thousands. Yeah. And 
acts of togetherness like that are so important? It is actually, you know, that's how we find actually the goodness in the community. And that's where even I find God at work. Um, in the goodness of people, in the kindness that we show to one another, in the solidarity we express to each other, and the way we are able to care for one another and share the grief and pain uh, and all that together as a community. And of course there is anger, um, which is maybe not helpful, but is it inevitable in a situation like this? Uh, there is a certain amount of anger which is inevitable in a circumstance, particularly when you go through a kind of tragedy. It's natural for some of us to actually feel that anger deep within us, you know. Sometimes we do not know what it is directed to or directed towards what, uh, but anger is actually one of the natural uh, reactions to a tragedy. Bishop John, thank you for talking to us tonight. We're really grateful to you for taking the time to talk to us. That's the Right Reverend Dr. John Barumbalaf, the uh, Bishop of Liverpool. As I mentioned earlier in the programme, the Prime Minister Keir Starmer came today to visit uh, Southport. He said he wanted to meet, and he did meet, with uh, some of the first responders who were on the scene yesterday, who many of them were back on shift today. And he also wanted to show solidarity with the families. And I began by asking him when we met at the police station a few hours ago here, how he reacted to what he heard about the events in Southport yesterday. I came here to pay my respects to the families and the victims who are going through raw pain and grief. Um, as a father myself, I can't even imagine what they're going through. I also had a briefing from the Chief Constable and the Emergency Services about the ongoing investigation. It's important that the space for now for that to be carried out, but also, and very importantly, to come here to personally thank those that responded, the emergency services yesterday. They're all back on duty today. I wanted to shake their hands and to say on behalf of the entire country, thank you for what you did yesterday, because that was no ordinary challenge that they ran towards and they have saved lives. And sometimes it's very important to come and personally say thank you. And so important that people don't rush to judgment on what happened and on the person that did it and seek in some cases to make political capital from it. Very important, I think, that we focus on what really matters today. That's the families, the victims and what they are going through, the trauma today. Uh, on the police who've got a job to do now on the investigation, they need the space to do that. And speculation does not help the families or the police in what they need to go through today. And we need to focus on them. Everybody needs to focus on them, myself included. Thank you, Prime Minister. Thank you. That was Keir Starmer, the Prime Minister, speaking to me uh, a little earlier in Southport. Of course, there are a number of elements to this story. There's the vigil that's happened here. There's the uh, crime scene itself on Hart Street, not that far away, and then there is Banks, uh, a few miles away from here, where that is a community in shock as well, because that is where the person who's been arrested on suspicion of carrying out this terrible attack yesterday comes from. That's where he lives, born in Cardiff. But Ian Haslam has spent the day there. He's been talking to people who joins us now, Ian. Well, Roger, Banks is a quiet, pleasant village about four and a half miles away from where the stabbings happened and it's where the suspect lives. Neighbours have told the BBC they saw the 17-year-old, who we can't name for legal reasons because he's under 18, leave this area in a taxi yesterday at around 11.30am, about 20 minutes before the attacks took place. As we know, he was subsequently uh, arrested. What we can now say, as you may have heard in Andy Gill's report a short time ago, is that he moved to the Southport area in 2013 having been born in Cardiff to parents who'd moved to the UK from Rwanda. He also has uh, an older brother. Now, the BBC has spoken to one of the family's neighbours from Cardiff who described his parents as a lovely couple, adding that they were a normal family. They were normal kids trying to make ends meet. Regarding identification, a completely false name has been circulating around social media. Merseyside Police earlier confirmed that this was incorrect and they've urged people not to speculate online. Here in Banks, uh, unsurprisingly, people are in shock. They're not used to police activity of any kind around here. I've spoken to many people today. They've told me how sad they are. Uh, and earlier I spoke to the local vicar who's been speaking on behalf of the community.
We've never had, as far as I know, this kind of police presence and anything happened like this, in, uh, which is at the heart of it, a, a little village. I think everybody in Banks is feeling exactly the same as all the other communities in Southport were absolutely devastated by everything that's happened. And everywhere you go, people are feeling it very, very deeply. Everybody knows somebody involved somewhere along the line, and it's just um, absolutely horrendous. So a police cordon remains in place here with police officers uh, at this scene and indeed around the village at what is a very difficult time for everyone living here. Roger. Ian, thank you. Ian Haslam live for us in Banks. Let's go from there to Alderhey Children's Hospital. Most of the children who were injured, of course, and sadly, Alice de Silva Aguiar, who died overnight, were taken there for treatment. Katie Walderman has been uh, talking to staff there and monitoring developments today. She has the latest from the hospital, Katie. Yeah, well, the statement from Merseyside Police came this lunchtime with the news no one wanted to hear. Confirmation that a third child had died following yesterday's attack. Now, despite the best efforts of medics here at Alderhey, nine-year-old Elise de Silva Aguirre died in the early hours of this morning. As we've heard earlier in the programme, police also named the two little girls who died yesterday as six-year-old BB King and seven-year-old Elsie Dot Stankham. Now, we know eight other children were also stabbed and tonight we've had an update from Alder Hay about their condition following what they describe as this heartbreaking situation. They say two of those children are still in a critical condition, they're in critical care but they are stable tonight. They say four others are also being cared for here and two other children are being cared for at Aintree and also at Manchester Children's Hospital but as of yet we're still waiting for an update on those two injured adults who were critically injured as they tried to protect those children yesterday. Katie, thank you very much. Katie Walderman live at Alder Hay for us. And of course, it goes without saying that our thoughts not only with the families of the three girls who died, but also with the families and loved ones of those who have been injured, who are receiving treatment in hospital, and our thoughts with those who are, who are doing the caring for them as well. Um, today's vigil that's happened here in the centre, just in front of the Atkinson on Lord Street in Southport, is, is part of that coming together. It's part, hopefully, of what ultimately will be a healing for this town after what happened. But it is something that no community would ever wish to go through, something that has shocked Southport to the core. And Phil McCann has been spending the day in Southport, talking to people, assessing the impact on the community and where it goes from here. A picture of Southport on a summer's day. A picture familiar to millions across the northwest. A picture of Southport on this summer's day. A picture that no one here in Southport is familiar with. This community is so close, so tight, that it seems everyone on the wide and straight streets that make up this town has some link to what happened. Paul knows the parents of one of the girls who's died. He's friends with the parents of two others who were stabbed. Shocked everyone. They don't expect it from a town like Southport. It's, it's crazy. It's crazy. One of my friend's daughters was involved, so it's just, it just touches home a little bit, doesn't it? I've lived here 47 years. You just don't expect it. It's, it's just shocked me to the bone. It's, I've got a friend who lives in the house over there. As a matter of fact, I go to that news agents quite a lot as well. It's just, you know, you just know people everywhere. Everyone you know has is, got something to do with it. It's horrible, horrible. Paul was just part of the steady stream of people who came to lay flowers today. Some from Southport, others I spoke to were from Liverpool and Stoke-on-Trent. I'm a father of three, as you can see, and my kids were in a different camp in Liverpool, exactly the same camp, and it's only 10 miles difference between two camps, and it's not adding up in my head. It could have been the other camp where my children were. I just wanted to come and pay me respect. It's absolutely terrible what's happened. I really feel for the parents. So, yeah, we've come all the way from Stoke just to lay some flowers. But the trauma here extends to those without direct links to the injured and the dead. Dennis lives just round the corner. Just couldn't understand it yesterday. You know, people are um, <clears throat> really shook up about it, you know. And we just want to know the reason, the motive, you know. There's a big effort now in this town 
to help people through what happened yesterday. Counsellors are in many cases offering their emotional support services for free. Quiet hubs have opened up in some buildings in the town and so have community spaces in places like this, Southport FC, here on Hague Avenue, where people are being invited to come along and talk. Gaynor is one of those counsellors offering her services for free. It's indescribable, the impact. Southport is a really kind of close knit community in so many ways. People know people, people have lived here all their lives. The impact is, it's like the ripple effect. Everyone knows everybody. Gaynor's advice includes how to help children. children. Reassure them that they're safe. They are safe. They're safe now. And that's the most important thing. Try and stick to the routine as much as possible. Allow them the space to cry. And Gaynor will tell you that support for Southport from Southport will have to continue long after the police tape, the politicians and the national media have gone. Phil McCann, BBC Northwest Tonight, Southport. There's uh, quite a bit of police activity continuing in Southport this evening as we're joined by the leader of Southport Council, uh, Marion Atkinson, Sefton Council. Uh, Marion, thank you for joining us. Uh, just picking up on what Phil was talking about there, about the support that people are going to need, what's going to be available for people going forward? OK, so the families that are directly impacted now are getting support through the police liaison team through the police. The council have set up a website which everybody can access, those who are not directly affected but, but can get support through mental health support. So we're holding the, the vigil tonight, we've supported, but Roger, it's whatever it takes and that support will carry on as, as, as we go through these very, very difficult days and weeks. And they are going to be difficult days and weeks. It's a very dark time. It's probably the darkest down this t day this town has known, I don't know, to way back in history. It's so important everyone stays together here, isn't it? It's absolutely crucial that we stay together. And I think by d what, what's happened tonight, the outpouring of love and support that people are showing each other, it's so, so important that we stick together and, and we remain kind. Let's, let's, let's try and support each other and, and get through this as best that we can. And just in a word, how are you coping? How are your fellow councillors coping? You're as shocked as the rest of us, I we're guess. All, we're all devastated, absolutely devastated, but we're here for our community and we need to support our community and that's what we'll be doing. Thank you for talking to us. Thank we're really grateful to you Thank and for waiting as well. You've been waiting a while. So Thank that's you. Councillor Marion Atkinson, leader of Sefton Council, talking to us here in Southport. As I mentioned last night, if any of this has resonated with you, if it's affected you in any way, Marion talked about some of the support available here. You can go to the BBC Action Line. They can signpost you to organisations offering help and support. The website is on the screen, bbc.co.uk uh, forward slash action line. There's also ongoing coverage on BBC Radio Merseyside. They stayed on air locally till 10 o'clock last night in the aftermath of what happened on Hart Street. And they are continuing coverage this evening. Paul Salt is on air. He's been here at the vigil and you can continue with their coverage into the evening. And BBC News Online, if you go to BBC News, to the online pages, you will find all the latest developments. If you go to the BBC News app, it will send you alerts to your phone if anything happens that uh, you need to be aware of all the breaking news it's i am um, got a lump in my throat as you know last night when we heard serena kennedy say that two children had died we now know that sadly it is three little girls who lost their lives yesterday others injured still in hospital as well as those two adults that bravely tried to fight off the person who attacked them with a knife all our thoughts are with them and with the first responders, as I said last night, who I've spoken to some of them today. They've been able to talk today. They couldn't say anything yesterday. They will never unsee what they saw. It is beyond words. I saw one of the signs by the flowers. It said, there are no words, only broken hearts. And I know everyone across the Northwest and further afield stands in sympathy with Southport. Thank you once again for watching. Good night.
Good evening. It's set to be another dry, sunny and warm day tomorrow. Probably the last of our really settled weather over the next few days as things are set to turn a little more unsettled from Thursday onwards. But temperatures once again tomorrow will be in the low to mid 20s. Uh, we could see 25 or 26 degrees, potentially a little bit warmer tomorrow. High pressure keeping things settled over the next couple of days. However, as we head towards the end of the week, low pressure will start to approach and that will freshen things up for the weekend. Overnight tonight, it is looking dry. We'll see long, clear spells. That might allow for a little bit of mist to form. Temperatures dropping off to around 10 or 11 degrees Celsius. But worth noting that in one or two more built-up areas, those temperatures will hover around 13 or 14 degrees overnight, which could potentially be quite uncomfortable to get to sleep. So a relatively muggy start to the day tomorrow in one or two places.